Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan today. I'm going to be doing another uh, Thing Like Goosebumps video. This is actually continuing the Invisible Man Universal Monsters Collection Legacy Pack thing series of movies. This is called The Invisible Woman from 1940. This film, of course, came out the same year as the Vincent Price sequel to the 1933 Claude Rains Invisible Man film. Uh, this is counted as the third film in the franchise. I don't know why. It doesn't feel like anything aside from another Invisible Person movie. It's a comedy. It's not even like a drama or a thriller like the previous two films. It's like a straight-up, like, comedy. It has Shemp Howard in it from The Three Stooges. Yeah, Shemp is in this. And he's great. I think that there's some really funny stuff in here. But it ain't an Invisible Man movie, and it's not really what I wanted from Invisible Woman, but it was fine for what it was. Have you ever seen a movie you were just okay with? Like, you're fine that it exists? That's what this movie was for me. Also, John Barrymore is in this, and I love John Barrymore. Margaret Hamilton is also in this, from Wizard of Oz. She played the Wicked Witch of the East, or West, whatever it was. The green-faced one. And she's great, too, for what she's doing here. This film, again, is a comedy, and essentially John Barrymore is a scientist who just invented a machine that will turn people invisible. And he needs human guinea, guinea pigs, and he kind of puts out an ad in the newspaper and stuff. Margaret Hamilton is his actual assistant and is, like, housekeeper, basically. And there's also another guy who's trying to, like, put money into this funding for John Barrymore's experiment. And this guy just basically lost all of his money. He's a rich fellow, and John Barrymore was, like, his last hope to make money. And it's kind of looking bad. Essentially, the only person who responded to any of the <laughs> the requests from the newspapers about a human guinea pig was actually one lady in general, and she wants to come in there, become invisible if it actually works, and go back and prank her very mean, hateful boss for his for the modeling career that she has, just to kind of kind of teach him a lesson. And that's essentially the first thing she does as soon as she becomes invisible, which kind of sets up the humoristic aspect of the whole movie. And it's fine. Again, humor is fine. I could totally see some people saying this is their favorite Invisible Man or woman, in this case, film out of the franchise. It is not mine. Uh, if anything, I would say it's probably my least favorite so far. I have not seen Revenge of the Invisible Man. I have not seen Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man, which I think will probably end up being my favorite. But this is probably my least favorite at this current point after seeing four movies, the first four. Because I have seen Invisible Agent, I plan on doing a review with that at some point in the next day or two, possibly. God willing. Invisible Woman is just kind of, it is what it is. I think the gangsters in the film, the mobsters, are really, really funny. They're kind of just comedic relief. Not really comedic relief because the whole film is not serious, but the film, I think, to me, it kind of just keeps going on. It's a little too long. It's an hour and 20 minutes, and I think it keeps rambling a little bit too much. Kind of like my reviews, eh? Yeah. And it, it kind of seems like it loses a plot. At some point, there's no plot anymore, and it just kind of is just characters doing things. And I don't like movies that do that a lot of the time. If it's a movie like Rumblefish, I'm fine with that. If it's like The Outsiders, I'm fine with that. Because it's the overall framing device for the film and how it works, right? This is not the case. This film starts out with a plot and then has no plot. All of a sudden, it just stops and just kind of people meander and do stuff. And one of them happens to be Invisible, who likes to drink a lot. John Barrymore is in it. I love John Barrymore. I saw the original, or not possibly not the original, but one of the first ever adaptations of the old short story, um, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it's terrifying. It's a silent film from 1920, I believe, or 1921. I think it was 1920, though. And John Barrymore, of course, played Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and he was horrifically scary. If you haven't seen that film, if you like silent movies, even if you don't like silent films, that's a great one to start with. It's terrifying. He's terrifying. He's a great actor. Um, he's good here. Probably my favorite character in the entire film, because he seems to be the only person who's not just a buffoon, you know, the whole movie. I like the film, I don't love it. But I do recommend it for people who like Goosebumps, because again, these Universal Monsters films are very clearly inspirational to R.L. Stein and were clearly things that he grew up on and loved them, even though it came out in 1940. He clearly is old enough to have enjoyed these things and be able to talk about these things. Um, Goosebumps has a lot of references to, like, The Invisible Man. You have, like, Let's Get Invisible, you have My Best Friend is Invisible, you have The Ghost Next Door kind of counts, but not really at the same time. You have a lot of invisible people in these. You also have uh, kind of a reference, but not really, in the first special edition of the Give Yourself Goosebumps books called Something Something Doom. 
remember what it's called, but I did a terrible review on it because I hated the book. It was pretty much terrible. But there was actually a, a very creepy mannequin thing. Like, you know when you go to science museums and you have, like, the, the mannequins, they have, like, the internal organs showing there's no skin on these mannequins? This thing goes walking around inside of the actual museum you're trapped in, and it's called the Visible Man. Not the Invisible Man, but the Visible Man. And he squishes when he walks around because he's wet and gross. It was terrifying stuff. It's like the scariest thing in that book and one of the scariest things I've ever read in Goosebumps. But anyway, there's a lot of references in Goosebumps to the Invisible Man franchise, or at least the first film with Claude Rains. This film does not hold up compared to the other ones, but I could see somebody who prefers comedy saying this is their favorite if they haven't seen Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man, which I have not seen that myself, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. It'll probably be my favorite of the whole franchise, more than likely. But yeah... <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on The Invisible Woman? Do you love the film? Do you hate the film? Do you think it's just okay like myself? What do you think about my review? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, guys. If I had to rate The Invisible Woman on a five-star basis, I would probably give it just about the same rating I gave the previous film. What was it called? The Invisible Man Returns, which was a stupid title because Vincent Price was not the same character as Claude Rains, and he was The Invisible Man in that film, not Claude Rains. Anyway, I would give this film the same rating I gave that film, a 3 out of 5 stars, because it's just decent. It's good. It has some good stuff in it. Very good comedy. If you like slapstick comedy from black and white comedy days, things like The Three Stooges, for example, it's not as funny as The Three Stooges, but there's a lot of slapstick comedy in here. I'm a huge slapstick fan, so there was a lot of stuff here I liked. Um, the special effects were mostly good. They weren't like as impressive as the previous two movies, but they were pretty good with the invisible stuff, like like things floating around, like glasses of wine and stuff floating around. It was impressive for its time, I have to say. Um, probably, if I had to say, out of what I've seen of the Invisible Man films, the first four films so far, I would argue that this has the least good special effects. Not Maybe, maybe not the worst, because they were good, but the least best <laughs> of the franchise at this point, in my opinion. Anyway, what are your thoughts about The Invisible Woman? Put your thoughts in comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. If I haven't already said it, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I don't know if I already mentioned that or not. I lose my mind sometimes after a couple of seconds. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you for watching, folks. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.